And welcome to our first real proper broadcast after Gamescom has opened its doors. It's, third, it's Wednesday, sorry. Uh, Gamescom is open. What you just saw was uh, the latest trailer for The Division, uh, Ubisoft's upcoming uh, action MMO type of thing. Yeah. And we're talking to Ryan Bernard, the game director. Hello. Ubisoft Massive, who's here to you know, tell us pretty much everything about The Division. But first up, Ryan. Ryan, sorry. It's all right. <laughs> How's your Gamescom been going? Uh, it's going great. Uh, it's kind of just getting fired up for us. So uh, today is the first day where we have some trade people coming through and uh, a few people that are involved. And then uh, tonight we have a, a special event for some of our VIP uh, community people. Uh, so unfortunately they have to have me explain the demo to them. <laughs> and uh, then we do a little Q&A and uh, then we have an Ubisoft party and have some beers. Sure. Uh, so it's, it's going well so far. Nothing is crashing. So who are you bringing tonight? I'm sorry? Who are you bringing with the community tonight? Uh, who in the community? Yeah. Uh, it's a mix. It's uh, 15, it's actually 18 players. Some of them, they have blogs. We have people from like Method Wild Guild, uh, people that are in the, uh, the Facebook uh, page, the Reddit community. Uh, so it's a mix. Our community manager, Antoine, set it up. Great. Okay. So, um, what's up with the division? What's new? Since last night. What's new? Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> well uh, <laughs> since since LA, uh, we what, what we brought for Gamescom is is very similar to what we showed in LA, but now you know our fans and the players can actually see it. Uh, it's been basically a, a month of, of vacation. The team needed a little uh, a little break, uh, and as you know, uh, in Sweden in the summer everything shuts down. Right. So uh, uh, we've just got fired up basically last week, uh, getting prepared for this. Uh, what we're going to bring. We had uh, two big announcements yesterday. Uh, one being that, that we're going to be uh, partners with Microsoft uh, for, uh, for the game at launch. And also the big one, which was we are going to simultaneously also release for the PC. Yeah, how, let, 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 let's talk about that because I'm Good. wondering, why didn't you say so back at LA, back at E3? Well, it I mean, obvious, no, no, it, it does seem obvious, uh, I guess, externally, but really uh, since the conception of the game, you know, uh, really what we've been working for was a dual platform game, so for PS4 and Xbox One. Um, but when we saw uh, the reaction, you know, from, from everyone and, and, and the interest uh, that was out there, uh, it allowed us to kind of take another look at it. And with, with Ubisoft's expertise and Massive's expertise in general being PC, a very PC background, uh, we decided that it would be uh, a smart decision uh, to go that way. So even though it may seem like it was obvious, it was it was not a foregone conclusion in any way right. before, before this. So it was basically the fan reaction that sort of I would say it's a combination of a lot of things. It's, you know, when you're making a big game, you want to make sure that the experience is, is uh, uh, to the level that you need it to be on every platform. 
So this isn't a port, it's not, you know, uh, uh, where we're developing one console game and kind of just moving it across. Really the way we have to approach it is developing three games. So we have to make sure that the experience is, is going to be, you know, that we can do it and we can do it to the level that it will be uh, uh, good enough. Um, so it was a lot of discussions, you know, um, and then in the end Eve just said do it. So we had to do it. <laughs> just kidding. But, uh, um, but yeah, it was a lot of talks and a lot of making sure that we can, can do it properly. Uh, you also mentioned the, the other announcement was the, was the companion app. Yes. Um, what can we expect from that? What will that be doing for those of you who it? It's something that I think we're really going to be pushing uh, uh, the boundaries of what, you've, what people have experienced for companion gaming before. Uh, you know, when we set out originally on, on designing it and what we wanted, uh, what can a companion app be? It was very clear that it had to be meaningful, which means that it has to be a client. It's not, you know, just some chatting or browsing your character or what, what a lot of what contemporary applications are. Uh, so that's a big challenge, right? You want to actually have an application that's running a game that interfaces with the HD client that has its own progression, that has a, a use in the game. So it's not going to be an annoyance for our players when they're, when they're playing. Uh, it's, it should be completely like a, a buff, if the way you think of it. Um, and that's kind of how we set out approaching it. Then it came about with, okay, it should be a drone, something that's kind of like a, a fifth party member uh, when you're playing, that can scout for you, can help you out in combat, uh, and it should always just be a positive experience. And you know we're still early in development on that, and it's what you can see here at our booth. Uh, um, it's what we had in LA. The the actual game, a little. It's about two minutes of gameplay with the with uh, the companion, and uh, and it's only going to grow from there. Um, PVP is another aspect you've been talking a little. Yes. About. I know you. You remember you teased it, tiny little bit of teased back at yes. E3, and then there's been just some quotes floating around about how PVP will matter and stuff yes. like that. So, Talk us through that. Okay, well, it's uh, you know, it's it's another thing where we, we, we can't go into super detail because you know this is a process and we don't want to uh, some of the stuff. It's it's very important for us that players discover uh, in the game. But uh, I can say that you know uh, PvP when we set out about how are we going to handle how are we going to handle PvP in general, right? And uh, you know, talking with my design director and the lead designer, and and we look, we just kind of sat down about games. What games do we like with PvP? What what about that PvP did we like? And how can we incorporate that that makes sense in our world? And really, it, it boiled down to to a couple simple things: was meaningful PvP. So it's not, uh, you know, our game isn't a sport PvP game, which can be great, but that's not our game. Um, and it has to be suspenseful, meaning scary. And the way the games that games that achieve that, it's because you don't actually know uh, who is a, who is a threat. You don't know the, the playing field so well. Um, and that's what we wanted to incorporate. The, the games that are out there that do that, though, right now, what, um, it's so hardcore that it makes them niche. So we have a different challenge with The Division, is that we want a broad audience for the game. But we want that type of PV, that, that experience for our PvP. So, uh, it makes sense that you can lose something uh, in our PvP, but uh, it'll never be a negative experience, meaning that you'll never come out of an area, a PvP area, which we call Dark Zones, worse off than you were going in. So you can definitely uh, experience loss in those areas, but uh, it, can, it can never be a bad experience for you, which is what I think makes games today that have this mechanic, uh, makes them niche, because nobody likes to play for a week and then lose all of their stuff because they died. Um, and, or they lose connection, it's an online game. There's lots of things that can happen. So that's kind of the mandate that we're working with and we want to integrate it into the main game experience. So it's not a separate thing that you'll you know, decide, oh, now I want to PvP and now I want to do open world stuff. It's going to be interwoven in the experience. So you know, with that, we'll, we'll be releasing more and more details and it's going to be something that's key uh, for gameplay for us and showing off, but uh, that's what I can say kind of right now. I guess uh, balancing something like that uh, to avoid stuff like grief and all yes. negative failure, that, that must be a challenge. It is a challenge, but we have... Uh, uh, you know, the, the team I have and we have at Massive is, is 
extremely experienced. We're all gamers, and especially with uh, online, I don't want to say MMO, but, but these types of games. So making sure that there's no griefing, what's the level span, how does it work with, with uh, possibly losing items, how is my experience game within these areas, what's the advancement path within these areas. It needs to be worthwhile. So the, the best items in the game will be found in these areas. There'll be crafting components that you need to get in these areas. So you really kind of need to get the uh, you need to have the drive to go there to uh, to make it worthwhile. If the, if there can be uh, something that you lose, so it's it's something that we will focus we focus a lot on and we will focus till you know the day we launch. Is it the the kind of system where? A relatively new player uh, will be able to defeat someone who's, who's um, like high level or whatever, yeah. depending on, on skill. So uh, uh, yes and no. I mean uh, that's a terrible answer, but I mean the uh, you know with with all we are an RPG. We're an RPG at our core, and we want items to matter. And items are. And you're out in New York. You have to to scavenge a lot of items. Your ammunition is important. The gear that you find or that you claim off of enemies is important. And you need a progression in that, or it's meaningless, right? But we're not going to be, I would say, anywhere near where uh, some contemporary games were. When you're maximum level and you've been PvPing for a while, and a new player who's reached maximum level comes to fight you, they might as well be level one. That's not going to be our game. So it will be segmented by uh, 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 in a way that's new, uh, that does uh, take into account your items and your level. So a new player won't just get owned uh, by people that have been playing the game for months. But it's also important to have some exposure to that, so you know there's a reason that you want to put time investment in this. I can get this type of item or this type of weapon. Uh, uh, can unlock these certain talents or skills by, by putting in time. So it's again a balance thing, just like balancing the PvP itself on how we get players together across the span. The um, obviously the big thing for this game is the next gen console. Yes. You're, in the, you're only doing the next thing. Though. Yes. I'm wondering, um, what's the sort of main advantage you know, besides raw processing power that the new consoles are giving you guys from the developer perspective? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's it's uh, it's the amount of freedom it gives us. Really, uh, the you know the the type of game that we're uh, the the experience that we want for the division. It's a big game. It's a big world. So you have to you know. You have to have something that can handle the loading, and, and you saw the demo. The our level of detail is extremely high. We really want to make sure that this looks and feels like a next generation game, and all that just adds up to player emergence. You, you really feel like you're in this New York that's falling apart, and that takes that takes power. That takes power from both the PC now and and also this next generation of consoles. Uh, so it allows us to have extremely advanced uh, behaviors for our, for our enemies. So basically everything that uh, you can do now currently in these, you can just do more of. So for me it's really just freeing. It's not really a, uh, it's not a challenge in any way. It just helps us yeah. make a better game. Are there things that, you know, I guess stuff like more RAM and everything? Like let you do that you just couldn't do before. Well, I'm not the the, the technical guy, uh, you know, but uh, we have been developing our engine Snowdrop specifically for uh, tailoring it for these next generation of consoles, so that um, you know when you're dealing with things like phasing and like moving in and out of the PVP zones that we're talking about, uh, loading into uh, uh, possible instance dungeon areas, those kind of things you want to make sure happen smoothly, really quickly. If there's any kind of loading, uh, and they're done well, so. Uh, we've been we've been thinking about this for a long time, and it's been from the ground up the way the engine is built. Also, I remember what, one of the things that, that people were most impressed about when when the first at the real demo was the guy crawling behind the car with the individual bullet holes. In the yes, windows, yes, and the destruction. Closing the door as he passed it to yes. take it by. Yes, yes. So, I mean, but but there's more to it than just like details like that, right? Like, yeah, I mean, all of that to, for us, uh, it was great to see that reaction. Uh, and really, uh, uh, Tobias Newman, our, our, our realization director, was uh, uh, extremely happy. He was like, I told you, because he was the proponent of the closing the door. Uh, and every iteration of the demo we had, there was always someone closing a door. Uh, but for me, it's, it's really, that's just uh, uh, environmental interactions. It's important for immersion. Of course you would close the door when you're moving uh, across cover when it's there. So um, it's something we kind of took for granted, but that's kind of the level that the game will be at. And the destruction that we can do with the engine is amazing. So, uh, you know, with all the, the, the light tracing and, and what happens when bullets move through the, the billboard and 
and dynamic lighting and everything that we can do. It's all, it, all in, for me, all it really does is it makes you feel like you're there. Um, and, uh, and it looks good. How big of a game world are we looking at? Well, I mean, yeah, we, we don't have like an exact gauge on the size, but uh, you know, right now when you uh, when you run, you can run for uh, like 15 minutes across New York without, and that's just uh, plain. One thing to think about when you're talking about size is we want verticality in the game. So there is an underground area which you saw in the development that's important for us. Moving into buildings, you know, vertically upwards is also important for us, so we can use the space. Uh, extremely well and you can get a lot more content in the same kind of area without just making it running for you know six yeah. miles uh, so that's kind of a goal is using the space uh, as best we can with, for what makes sense for the game would that be like stuff like a fully exploring skyscraper or well, not fully, but yes, we do want uh, interior exploration to be very important. You need to go into these buildings when you're looking for contraband, when you're scavenging, when you're having encounters inside. And so you'll be able to go up floors. We have a lot of our AI time that we're uh, uh, developing is for an interior living system. Our game is a little different that, you know, people are sick. And this is, New York is a very, very dangerous place. So you're not roaming the streets so much as some in other games. So, uh, spending a lot of time for what's the interior life, what's the inside life, uh, is something we're developing also for the game um, uh, that, that takes advantage of the next generation power like we were talking about. So just as the last beat, remind me, when is the game sort of set to come out? So we're set for a release uh, now on three platforms uh, for winter of 2014. So Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC. So still a good while ago. Yeah, we still have a while to go, yes, yes. And, so you'll, I, and I guess also you'll, lots of stuff to reveal later. Yes, you'll see more and more gameplay from us as we as we get closer. All right. That's it for us right now. Uh, be sure to tune in later when we do our post uh, or after hours show, I guess we'll call it. And tune in tomorrow and Friday as well. We've got some new guests, indie hour stuff, lots of good stuff to come. Thanks for watching.